Hi guys, and we are in VBS Worlds right now, and I have just imported this beautiful couch from SketchUp, which, let me tell you, was very hard, and we are going to go over it, or I'm going to go over it with you today. So if we exit out of this, we're, I've downloaded this, uh, fainting couch, um, from the SketchUp 3D Warehouse, uh, again, uh, made by Tina, uh, this is just an average couch that somebody made, there's nothing special about it, um, for today, uh, we're going to need, uh, a few programs, we're going to need SketchUp, um, obviously, we're going to need a program called paint.net, uh, and we're going to need 3ds Max, okay, so there's, there's two versions of 3ds Max. Uh, there's 3ds Max, and then there's 3ds Max Design. Do not get 3ds Max Design, otherwise it will not work. Okay. Um, you'll if you want to do this, uh, you'll have to get a trial. Uh, a trial of the 2010 version. Okay. This only works with the 2010. So uh, I don't know how you're going to go about this. But, uh, yeah, you're going to need the 2010 version of 3ds Max, uh, yeah. Uh, if you're a student, though, you can get 3ds Max for free. However, um, I believe it's only available 2015 yeah only the latest versions are available so that's a problem uh, I don't know how you're going to get a get through that but contact me if you need any help with that kind of thing um, okay so we're going to start off with SketchUp I just imported this model. Um, it looks uh, very nice. It got some nice textures. Um, I chose I chose a model with textures because uh, textures are actually important. Uh, if you want if you want to have textures, then that's that's an important thing you need to have when importing. So. Um, I'm just going to get this all prepared. Um, we are going to reverse faces. Uh, if you haven't seen my tutorial about our tutorial on importing into Active Worlds, you want you'll want to see that too uh, because that is important. Um, so here we have our model. A nice model. Um, so I'm going to uh, edit the component on this. Reverse this face so that it's nice and white. And you might notice that the cylinders are blue. So you say, oh, well, we got to reverse faces on this one, right? I don't actually know about that because uh, as a as a test. I, uh, I, I tried it, I imported this already into, uh, VBS Worlds, and as a test, and, uh, this, the cylinders didn't work out so well, so I kept them like this, I kept them blue, and they turned out fine, so, I don't know about that, um, I don't know, if it doesn't work, if your cylinders look kind of weird, uh, when you import them, just reverse faces, uh, but I'm going to leave them blue because that worked for me. So, uh, that's all. Everything's done. Just check all of the faces. You can see that that's white. That's white. Everything's good. Okay, so, I'm going to go into view, shade with textures. Okay. So now what we're going to want to do, oh, we don't want to do that. We're going to move this so that it's 
nice and close to the center here. Um, okay, so, whoa, that's good. So, oh yes, one other program you need. Um, you are going to need 7-zip. I forgot. Uh, 7-zip. You're going to need this as well. Um, it looks like that. So, www.7zip.org. Okay. So, we are going to grab this, and we're going to go File, and then Export, and then 3D Model. Okay. Uh, first, you'll want to save it, so I'll just go Save... Oops, save as, and we're gonna go. Uh, I've made a folder called Fainting Couch, because uh, this is what it's called. And we'll call it Fainting Couch. Fainting Couch dot SKP. Okay, uh, that's saved. Now we're going to want to go export and then go 3D model. Okay, we're gonna go to the original folder. Uh, fade the couch. Okay, so there's two files. Unlike last time, uh, there's a Clada file dot dae and then the Google Earth file dot kmz. Uh, we're gonna use the dot kmz file. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna use that. So let's export that. Good, that's exported. So I'm gonna go to Thinking Worlds and I'm gonna go to Fainted Couch. And here's our .kmz, okay? So, we're going to right-click this. Don't open it up. Go to ZZip and click Open Archive. Now, this is a KMZ. This is a KMZ. .kmz is actually a... Uh, actually, it's just a file that... Yeah, KMZ is a file... That I just forgot what I was saying. Oh yeah, KMZ is basically just a zip file, uh, a disguised zip file. So we have our entitled .dae, and you remember that we have the options to export .dae, and for some reason it didn't work. When I just exported .dae, but it did work. When I exported as a KMZ, and then just grabbed this .dae and put it into here for whatever reason, I have no idea why it worked. So now we have our folders, we have our things. Okay. Oh man, another program. Uh. So we are going to want the Autodesk uh, FBX converter. Okay, Autodesk XBFBX Converter. Okay, this is completely free. You can just download that. Uh, so, I'm going to grab FBX Converter, Autodesk FBX Converter. So, we are going to find our file. So, we're going to click Add. And then we're going to click, uh, go back to our fainted couch here. And we're going to click untitled.dae, okay? So now this is going to convert it into an FBX, a file that, uh, that Autodesk uh, 3ds Max, uh, is, uh, will accept. Uh, so that's good. We're going to change this to FBX 2010. We're going to do that. Uh, rename selected file. Change destination folder. We want to change that because we're going to want it to go to Thinking World's Fainting Couch. Okay, and okay, select. And then we go convert. And it's converted. If we go back to our Fainting Couch, we can see we have untitled.fbx. Okay, so that's great. 
Now we are going to go into Autodesk 3ds Max 2010. You can look at that Autodesk 3ds Max 2010. Uh, make sure it's 2010, otherwise the plugin won't install. Uh, so we are going to load up our FBX. We're going to go to Import and up, up, and we're going to go to Fainted Couch, and we're going to select our Untitled .fbx. Okay, we don't really need to worry about this stuff. We press OK. And voila! There is our couch as an FBX file. If you look inside, uh, you'll see that the other side is non-existent. Um, so yeah. Uh, you can also see that the cylinders turned out well. And that all of the objects are separate so like I can still move these cylinders uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to do this and delete these I don't know what they do but they don't sound very good so now that we have that we are going to grab a uh, thinking world's avatar that we're going to use for scale so we're going to go to import again, import not native file, and we're going to go all the way into our C directory, and we're going to go into our program files, and we're going to go into Autodesk right here, and 3ds Max 2010, and we're going to go into plugins. And then Caspian Tools, and then uh, Art Utils, and then Thinking World Scale Check dot three Ds. Okay, and yes, okay. So here is our avatar. Okay, this is default size for a Thinking World's avatar. Uh, this is a scale test model. So what we're going to do is we're going to move this and. Make sure it's the right size. Okay. That's about the right size. So now we can just delete her. Because we don't need her anymore. And uh, position the couch. So. Uh, let's talk pivot points. So we have a couch here. And. If we look, we have a little black, like there's black lines, and then there's a center black line where it all meets up. So right about here. That is where the couch is going to pivot. Okay, this is not important for couches. It's actually more important for doors. So see if you are making a special customized door uh, in 3ds Max. Uh, then you'd want to set the the side that you want to uh, the pivot point. So now that we have that, we're going to right click and we're going to go to Caspian Utils. Um, you're going to need the Caspian Utils or Caspian Tools plugin installed for this tutorial. Uh, so yeah, so we're gonna find our model or find where we want to store it. Uh, gonna go to documents and where the folder is stored um, okay so we're going to create a new folder and we're going to call it um, thinking worlds uh, files thinking worlds files because that's what I called the last one um, and we're going to call it painting couch dot model Okay, uh, save. However, it won't save yet. We're going to do export textures. This is very important. And click export full scene. And it'll export, 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 export. Good. So that's all fine and daddy. If we go back to our fainting couch and go to Thinking World's files, you'll see we have fainting couch.model and fainting couch.mtrl. Okay, and we have these textures. 
Um, I'll go over the textures later, but right now we need to render this. Okay, so, uh, if you noticed, um, here, I'll show you. Uh, inside Thinking Worlds, uh, they have a picture of the model. Sometimes. Sometimes they don't. But, they have a picture of the model. Sometimes. Okay, so we are going to make a picture of that model. And, uh, yeah. So we're going to go back to here. And we're going to do a box here. And we're going to make a, er, not box. We don't want a box. And we want plane. So grab a plane. Okay, and there we go. It. Okay, so, okay, we have a nice texture here. Um, but I'll show you how to create your own. So we have diffuse. So we're just going to go to diffuse. Set that diffuse to like white. There we go. Um, set the specular up because why not? Glossiness. Make it nice and glossy. See, you can see the glossy effect here. Uh, let's make that a square. Oh, that doesn't really look too glossy. But whatever. Um, so we have glossiness, and we're going to. Oh no, we don't want to create a new one. A new, a new. Okay, so we're going to apply this to this panel here, and we're going to render map in viewport. Um, and then we're going to do this. Um, there we go. Now I'm going to go to. Uh, no, not this. I'm going to go into render setup, and I'm going to select the uh, mental ray dot photometric dot lighting dot with gi. Okay. Um, so now I just press load, and we're going to render this. So it takes a little while, but you'll notice you can't see anything because there's no lights. So we need to make some lights. So grab lights. We go free light, and we go with that. And now we have a free light, so we're just going to move this light around a bit. Uh, oh, I did not mean to do that. I do. Uh, move the light around. Uh, we could also play with the light. The light's information here. Uh, shadows on. Okay, so we're gonna position it somewhere where that's gonna work for our render. Oh no, uh, I do. So that looks decent. So we're gonna get a nice, nice look at that, and we're gonna click render setup, and we're going to render mental ray dot photometric dot with GI. Click render and. There we go, we have a nice looking couch. Okay, so now that we have this couch, we can click save and go up, 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 and we go to fainting couch, and we go to thinking world files, and we're going to call this uh, render, and we're going to save it as a JPEG. Okay, uh, and we're going to do that, and then we're going to save it again. And we're going to do render. And then we're going to save it as a .dds. So we look down. We find .dds image file. And we're going to save it as a .dds. Okay. So. That saved. Now that's all we need to do in uh, 3ds Max. So that's. I think. For now. Uh, I think. So I'll just leave it open. Um, let's go into our files here. So now I have render.jpg and render.dds. So that's great. Um, now what we're going to need to do is make these textures look nice. So this is where paint.net comes in. We're going to right click it. And we're going to click open with paint.net. 
okay this is very 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 important this is like the most important part of the model if your model has textures okay if you do not do this uh, your model will turn out really wonky uh, so we are going to search up power of two power of two Wikipedia the free encyclopedia and we're going to go down and we go first 96 powers of two uh, en.wikipedia.org forward slash wiki forward slash power of two so we have a bunch of numbers uh, and this is very important so we're going to open up paint.net and if you look the file is 600 by 430 okay those are the pixel dimensions so this is a problem the file has to be a power of two so see that's a power of two one is a power of two two is a power of two four is a power of two eight sixteen thirty two these are all powers of two okay it has to be one of these numbers the sizes the dimensions of the object has to be one of these numbers so we're going to look at this and we're going to go image we're going to go resize and it comes up with this nice little resize box so width so the closest one to 600 is 512 so we're going to change that make sure maintain aspect ratio is unchecked okay it can't be checked like it has to be unchecked so we're going to change this to 512 so the width is now 512 so now the height is 430 so the closest one to 430 in my uh, my view is 512 so it's going to have to be square however the ink the image is actually the texture is actually uh, oblong or whatever so now it's square we're just going to save this save 512 and we can see that it says 512 by 512 Okay, uh, let's go back. So that's that texture. And we have another texture. So let's open this one. Open with paint.net. And you have to do this with all of your textures. So this one, as we can see, is already 512 by 512. So we look back. 512 by 512 is a power of 2. So we don't need to work on this one. So we go back to our folder. We go, okay, let's do this one. Open with paint.net and this is 800 no sorry 512 by 512 it just took a little bit to load there because I got a bunch of programs running so 512 by 512 we don't need to worry about that we go open with paint.net okay this is 432 by 432 image resize 512 by 512 okay uh, let's save that okay okay let's open this one up open with paint.net and this is 340 by 340 um, uh, it depends what you want to do I did 512 I'm going to do 512 by 512 but you could also do 256 by 256 uh, image resize because this one's kind of close 512 by 512 okay we're gonna do file save okay okay and then we have one more here it's this last one we're going to go open with paint.net uh, 340 by 340 so we're gonna go image Size 512 by 512. There we go. So we're gonna save this one as well. Save. Okay. Now that's all done. So now we're going to need to go into our the place we installed uh, Caspian Tools plugin. Okay. So it's in OSC Program Files, Autodesk, 3ds Max 2010 plugins and uh, Caspian tools so we're going to open up Caspian Caspian tools sorry 
and we're going to go into bin. Okay, and uh, there's a number of different stuffs. We don't need to worry about anything here, pretty much. And we're gonna go to g o g e o m dot e x e. So double click that. Dot geometry builder. You can see geom dot e x e and geometry builder. We're gonna click geom dot e x e. So we're going to exit out of here, Thinking Worlds, and we're going to go to Fainting Couch, Thinking Worlds Files, and then select our Fainting Couch dot model. And we're just going to process that. Boom. And it'll say converting, blah, 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 blah. And then it's, it'll say this. And it'll say saved. So that's a keyword that it's done. We can exit out of here. Then we go to Thinking Worlds object compiler because we are compiling an object uh, not an environment okay characters are much more complex uh, I haven't done that myself so we're going to go thinking worlds object compiler and here it is this is the stuff that really matters uh, so we go fading couch this is the stuff you see uh, if we go object uh, that see container backpack and time Aviva Jumps Pro that's the name of it so we're going to call it fainting couch the model file uh, will be thinking worlds uh, fainting couch thinking worlds files fainting couch dot model everything else will be selected or the geometry file and the model file will be selected now we need to go to the thumbnail file. Remember those renders we did earlier? Uh, we're going to go to Thinking Worlds Files and click render.jpg. That's what you see. Okay, there, there, that's where we added. Now we're going to add the render.dds interaction thumbnail. Um, that's important too. So now a description. Um, sometime, a lot of the time actually. Uh, there is no description so you can just do no description but I am going to credit the original owner uh, this object actually I'm gonna call it fainting couch one because I already have a fainting couch object in my uh, in, in VBS worlds so fainting couch one uh, this object was created in SketchUp by uh, Tina uh, by Tina. Um, uh, original file located here. I just did control C there. Uh, okay. So that's it. So now that we've got everything done, we're going to go file. And then we're going to go to compile. And then we have our new object. I'm going to call this fainting couch one dot compiled object. Uh, okay, fainting couch one. And it's successfully compiled. We did it. So now we're going to go up here. We're going to go tools. We're going to go import assets. Now we're in imports assets. We're going to select add. And we're going to go out of here and go into our fainting couch folder and we're going to go thinking worlds files and we're going to select our fainting couch one dot compiled object we're going to press open we're going to click it and there it is there's a the thumbnail there's the description and it says this object was created in sketchup by tina original file located here and we're going to select import it says assets successfully imported and voila and now we can load it up thinking worlds we need to go to thinking worlds and we go to uh, uh, fainting couch so f fainting couch one so that's uh, the original one the original test so we're going to call this and we're gonna finish it up and there we go then we publish it one to our right here is our model. There you go. That's how you import from VBS Worlds 
to SketchUp. I know it's a pain, but uh, that's the way you have to do it. Thanks for watching. Bye.